Justin. This is Talk Junkie. This could, this could be a short one. Um, you know, we're in the middle of the quarantine, and then we had the storms last night. Power's out where I live. Uh, I need a fuel for the generator. Um, there's no power in my county or most of the counties around me. Letcher County has power, so I come up into Whitesburg. <clears throat> Um, and there's bits and pieces of it out. The the gas stations are packed. I mean, packed, packed. Uh, the There's one you can't get off the road at. The other one I sat for 20 minutes to get a pump. Now, I could have stopped at one before I got to there, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to because it looked a little busy. I wish I had in hindsight. But that's not really the point. I had to go to the restroom after I pumped the gas. I went in, washed my hands. And I noticed there was a little boy in one of the stalls. I would say seven, eight years old. He opened the door, looked at me, covered his mouth, and shut the door back. I washed my hands. I was drying my hands. I could see him through the mirror. He'd open the door and just peek out, shut it, and peek out. As I was going to the door... He opened the door and covered his face with his jacket and ran over to wash his hands. And I I just, I went on out. That fear is real. And I wondered down the road how that'll impact it. You know, my nine-year-old son is, is afraid to a certain degree. But his knowledge of the situation is fairly limited. We don't really put a whole lot out there because we don't have a whole lot of proof all these numbers that they throw around you know uh, there's we we don't know what's what and and if it was the best possible situation or the worst possible situation what at nine is he going to learn from just constantly giving him the bad because there's enough bad his his world's been changed his you know the thing, way he does things have been changed. But, you know, my, on the opposite side of the spectrum, uh, my 21-year-old's not afraid at all. She's actually done some very stupid things. Um, but it's, you know, it's age, it's, it's interpretation of, of things. Um, we've been very, very, very misinformed all the way around. Uh, the media uh, leadership um, and and we just simply don't know and I, I think that that's a scary proposition I think that scares people but I honestly think that's the best thing for leadership to do is just go hey we don't know because a lot of times honesty allows you to kind of back up and go okay and that was some people that would incite panic I'm sure I don't know uh, I wonder how much um just everything that's kind of going on right now in general is causing panic, you know. If I was, say, a 12-year-old kid who, you know, lives where I live, okay, internet's down. Uh, People are making runs on grocery stores to buy things. Adults are panicking to some degree. Um, People aren't working or at home and, and people, you know, You've got family members at home every day that are usually at work, and you're usually at school. They called off school. You can't get a snow day on a reasonable day down here that there should be a snow day. And then occasionally you'll get a day off for something that there's no need to get a day off for. But that's beside the point with the unreliability of of our upper level of our school system down here. The fact that they called off school for the remainder of the year has to set some type of alarm off to these kids and then say they they went out on a day like today all we had last night was a windstorm it wasn't nothing there was no tornado nothing but it did a lot of damage a lot of straight line winds a lot of heavy heavy winds there are trees down everywhere there are buildings and roofs tore off here and there there's flooding in a couple spots power trucks everywhere it looks like a different environment than normal. See, that would look that way anyway. It's just a windstorm. But when you compile that 
and it's all compounded with, with what's going on, you know, to a kid that's probably a, a different look, you know. I mean, what if they're watching the news? You know, I mean, police officers are giving tickets to people, you know, to, for gathering together, and they're, they're writing down, um, writing down license plate numbers, and, and you know, small things on their own have less impact as this whole situation together. And some adults are handling this extremely well, extremely intelligent. Um, some adults don't have the capacity to handle it well or intelligently. Some adults get off on the fear mongering. It's, it's, it's good to them. See, if this was going to kill three quarters of the population of the earth, which it's not, but if it was, fear mongering still would not be beneficial. I don't understand the thought process. Like I said, there's there's some adults, not just kids, there's some adults who can't handle it. They don't have the ability. They don't have the coping mechanism. They gotta go buy five more guns. They they they've gotta not trust their neighbor. You know? And and that's not a knock on gun owners. I'm a gun owner. It's 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 a knock on people that it may not even be their fault. Maybe it's not a knock, it's just a, a factual statement. Some people can't handle it. People don't have the ability to handle it. Some people thrive in the chaos. Some people want to perpetuate the chaos because it it allows them the ability to to express things that normally they couldn't express. It feels good to them. Some people will profit from the chaos. Some people will lose everything in the game. Some people, (laughs) their living is the chaos. They're in the news, and they want to be, they want to be number one, and so you've got to be somewhat reckless and misinformed. It's a weird time. I think we'll get through it. I think had this happened at a different time in life, at a different time in our existence, obviously it would have been greatly different. This, If this had happened in... See, this is the thing. We don't really know the rate yet. The, the thing is, we don't know how many people have been infected. But so many people are asymptomatic, there's no way to know. Our population is much higher than it has been in other points in history, so that, that makes it kind of a mystery. If, if we start testing for antibodies and we figure out that the infection rate is much higher than we think it is, then the death rate could fall to next to nothing. And, you know, right now, it, it's a, it, hindsight's always going to be the best way to look at something. If we look at it right now number-wise, not, not percentage-wise, because you can't look at percentage because we don't know that. If we just look at it death-wise, my understanding is at least in, I think, the United States, I can't remember. I, either way, at one point in time, the last time I, I seen this, we still hadn't reached in this physical year as many deaths as we had from the flu. And so people keep bouncing this, so it's not worse than the flu. You know, CNN said that. A lot of people said that. Um, I think Fox said that. But the, the, the point is, we don't know. So you, you, in hindsight, it's a much easier way to look back. So when we look back on it, then maybe we could estimate the infection rate is extremely high, then it could be something in us, not just genetically, but something in former um, shots or immunizations that have reduced it. So that could mean that this same um, virus in the 1800s or 1700s could have wiped out the world. Or, Or it could mean that this same virus in the 90s 
if we had got it exactly like we got it right now, maybe it wouldn't have affected society the same way it has. Because we don't know yet. We don't know if we're too scared. We don't know if we went too far. Now, definitely, it's different than anything in my lifetime. And I think the problem is, in, in looking at it in its uniqueness, is a lot of the deaths have happened other places. The United States has been fairly fortunate. Now, I, I know this is something about we have the most cases. Look at this in perspective, people. If, if you look at the size of the contiguous U.S., we dwarf the countries that we are... Um, have a higher infection rate. Vastly dwarfed. We basically have, let's say, 38 good size countries. We'd have to put some populations together. But let's, you know, Rhode Island, places like that, they're, they're small. But let's, I mean, there's, what's, five, six million, somewhere, somewhere between four and six million people in Kentucky. Like, there's some small population places, but we've got at least 30 massive countries, if you want to put them together. I think California alone was, California and one other state, a small state, was right there with Italy in population. And maybe pretty close in land. I can't remember. But, you know, a lot of the death has happened in places like Italy. You know, you look at the massive numbers they've had. And then even here, you, you again, we're 50 huge countries stuck into one. That's why we have such a hard time getting along sometimes. You look at all of the deaths in New York compared to these other places, you know, I don't even know if we broke a hundred yet in Kentucky. I don't watch the numbers all that often. I don't I don't like looking at that. I, show me the science. Show me the, the progress we're making. I don't really want to see the negative side of it. To a certain degree, I mean, look, responsibility-wise, you know, to be a responsible adult, you have to take in some negative. I'm not saying that. You know, sometimes I can be childish and be like, nah, I don't see the bad. Because the bad's not fun to look at, you know. But you do, to some degree, have to, to look at it. You have to uh, to try to understand it, you know. Um, but I think that fear in that little boy's eyes, I wonder how long that'll last. Kids bounce back pretty good. And if this was all over in a month and there was nothing tragic happening in his life, he hadn't lost anybody or anything of that nature, which statistically at this point he hasn't. If he's from here and he lives here, he hasn't. Then that fear probably won't stay. The impact of the situation may stay, and that's, that's valuable. You know, not that, not that it's wrong for kids to know about what happened. Our son... Uh, I'm always worried about what I say. Our son, his comprehension's different than other kids. So hindsight with him is a little easier to explain things other than trying to explain them when I don't have all the information in the moment. And he can scare a little easily. But that fear can go away unless there's just a greater impact. But the longer this drags on and, and the, the more this, you know, there were going to be some people that get some negative impact from this. Not, not. I mean, obviously, there's people going to lose family. I'm talking about people that aren't physically impacted by it. Younger people are going to be emotionally impacted by it. And I think it will somewhat change society. I don't think it'll change us long term. Not completely. But there's the possibility of long term growth out of it. And I just want to say this one thing, and and then I'm done. This is a short little podcast, but this this is what kind of gives me hope out of such a bad situation. I went to New York right before all this started and I expected dirty streets. I expected mean, cruel, unfriendly people. Rude people. Because that is the picture that had always been painted for me. But I wanted to see this place that was so vastly different from where I have lived my entire life. The streets weren't really all that dirty. Uh, they were actually fairly clean, cleaner than the creeks and streams where I live. Um, but the big thing is, people were very nice. 
people were not rude at all. They were rushed. They were hurried. They were missing out a lot on life. They did look like the proverbial rat in the maze often. They were focused on a task, never looking up to enjoy what was around them, but extremely nice. And they had a different turn, a different demeanor, but that's to be expected. Again, we live in an one country made of, in all honesty, at least 30 large countries. We, we are a different environment, in my opinion, than anything else in the world. China's different than us. They're different in population to, to the degree that I believe they have a higher population than us, but they, you know, it's more concentrated in certain areas. Anyway, anyway. These people had a different demeanor, had a different term, but they were mostly nice. There were some people, but look, trust me, there's a lot of those people around here. A lot of those people everywhere. There were a lot of nice people, really had a, a wonderful time while I was there. I enjoyed it immensely. Uh, no complaints about my interaction with people. Sir. Now, upon returning and saying that, there was somebody I went to high school with. Uh, she moved on and, and went to college there and lived there. Um, she said that she was there prior to 9-11. And that prior to 9-11, it was a different turn, a different type of attitude. That that old New York attitude that I was warned about was somewhat there. It may not have been constantly with everybody, but it was very prevalent. I mentioned that on the podcast. had a couple other people reach out and go, yeah, you know, it is. Uh, I've had that verified and mentioned, and, and, and I've actually looked up some things and, and kind of read about the, what they consider a phenomenon of a change of heart after 9-11. Um, it appears that that has been... Um, that has been noticed by a lot of people. So that from this great tragedy, from this horrible situation, from this awful thing, a positive change came from that. And that happens a lot. It happens a lot in life. That positive change comes from negative situations. This is a negative situation. It's not a fun situation at all. I think it's a situation that will be remedied, and I think that we'll come out of the other side different. But I hope that we come out the other side with a positive change, with a positive difference. Muhammad Ali said, A man who, who views the world the same at 50 as he did at 20 has wasted 30 years of his life. He's a bad, bad man. He's a smart, smart man, too.